Well, welcome to our MBA course or our master's degree course, which is Marketing 560. Uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm going to throw out at you. And the one thing I want you to uh, understand is that nobody's expecting you to get everything in this orientation. However, it's best to come back to the PowerPoint or to the video and pick up information because I will expect you to know a lot of this stuff. Um, if this is your first master's degree program, um, then send me a little text letting me know and then I could help you along the way. If not, then we're kind of expecting you to uh, know the, the little protocol of how things work. All right, let's just go here somewhere. So uh, my name is Professor Phil Shapps and I'd like to welcome you. And uh, notice it says marketing and strategy. Okay. So marketing strategy is really how we do it. And so I look forward to meeting all of you and helping you achieve your educational goals. Um, yep, that's my doggy and he is now three years old. But that's Elton, and he is a golden doodle. He's very unusual because he was created through artificial insemination. They found the best golden and the best doodle, poodle, put them together, and we got ourselves a little puppy. He's so cute, and he's with me all the time. He's sitting right under me right as we speak, and he is quite smart. Um, he just, uh, not only is he a level four agility trained dog, but uh, I've also taught him how to balance my checkbook. So uh, that, that'll go to show you how smart this dog is. Anyway, about me, uh, I was the executive director of marketing for Universal Pictures for over 20 years. And at Universal, I worked on the marketing of over 400 feature films including, I don't know if you've seen any of these, uh, they're kind of obscure films. A lot of you may not have seen them. Um, E.T., Jurassic Park, Back to the Future, Schindler's List, The Grinch, A Beautiful Mind. And I've worked with Steven Spielberg and Ron Howard on the marketing of all of their films and many advertising agencies. And I've owned an advertising agency. And after Universal, I became a consultant and uh, I've been doing, you know, all of this good stuff. And, you know, it's, it's been a great career. And in 2008, I went back to school and got a couple of degrees and didn't know what I was going to do. And I ended up being a teacher. And I not only teach at Southern New Hampshire, but I have taught at many, many, many colleges as a subject matter expert. Um, my daughter is also a marketing uh, executive at an advertising agency, and she just started teaching as well. She's 33 years old, and uh, she got her MBA last year, and she's a great kid. Very, very lucky. All right, you can see some of the stuff that I've done in the days of newspaper. And uh, uh, I worked on the Academy campaign for the Beautiful Mind, and um, we spent a lot of money. Marketing costs money. All right. So I, I'll read some of this, but I'll also paraphrase it. So this class is about brand management and how marketing should be approached as a partner in strategic decision-making, both internally and externally. Okay, now I'm going to break that down for you. Okay, brand, what is a brand? A brand is like the manufacturer, like um, BMW, um, GE, those are a brand, Nike is a brand, and the product that they make is the product. So we have a brand, the company, and the product. 
Um, we'll talk about that all through this class. So when we talk about a partner, it's in partnerships with the business point of the company. And strategy is kind of like, what are we going to do? And then there's how we're going to do it. And then there's going to be, we're going to do it. Okay. So in this class, you're going to, we're going to talk a lot about what we want to do. What is it we want to do? And um, that requires research. And one of the things I'm going to tell you early in this lecture, that if you make up data, you know, because you have some obscure company, um, I'm not going to accept it. Okay. So you can't make anything up. This is a research class. You can't, I had somebody say, well, I use Amazon, so I'm an expert. And so everything I wrote about, I just came from my observation. He failed the class. Okay. Last session. Failed the class. No, 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 no. This is a research class and you're expected to find uh, sources within the last five, six years, max, keep it fresh. Uh, you're also going to come up with a product. And that's why I think if you read my announcements, and the key to this class is those announcements, because I tell you exactly what I'm looking for. If you follow it, you get an A in the class. In fact, most of my students get A's anyway, because they believe me, they trust me, they know that if I'm giving them the grade, it would be stupid not to, to do your own thing, you know. Uh, but you can always write me and ask and uh, keep it simple, you know, and I will respond how, how best I can. Okay, so when we talk about internally and externally, we're talking about internally within the company and externally outside of the company. We're going to talk in, I think, week five about a SWOT analysis, which is a company's strengths. Oh, it's right here. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Okay. Strengths and weaknesses happen within the company. That's a big thing. If you, that's one of those, better write that down quickly. Uh, they happen within the company. For instance, uh, what is the company's strengths? What are the company's weaknesses? A lot of people will say, well, you know, my product, nobody buys it outside, you know, nobody, I can't get it in stores. That's stuff that happens externally. Internally would be situations like uh, your uh, 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 chain, uh, you know, yeah, God, my brain just went, human resources, uh, your food chain, whatever, wherever you're getting your products, you know, uh, in, within the company, you're having problems with the CEO. You're having problems with staffing. You don't have enough machines to make the product. Uh, you cannot get your, your scarce resources have dried up. These are all internal. The other stuff, your threats, would be like another company, you know, is coming in. They, they're breaking into your market share. Okay, so we study strategic positioning, okay? And market opportunities, pricing strategies, market analysis, as well as product differentiation. All of those things sound like impossible. You're going, oh my gosh, I'm going to flip out. I don't know what any of that means. You know what? You got a book and you go to the back and it's got definitions. And, you know, this is, we're not, you know, let's just say you're learning Greek, but you only have to learn about 10 words, okay? in order to communicate. We'll be doing a SWOT analysis and a marketing mix. The marketing mix consists of the product, the price, the place, and the promotion. Now, once again, if you've done marketing in your undergrad work, you understand. But let me explain how this works. Say you are, you've gotten your MBA and you want to get a job, okay? You're the product. How much you want to get paid is the price, where you want to work is the place, and how you let people know that you're available to work is the promotion. And we call marketing a form of um, building awareness and creating a need for a product, service, or idea. And so what you'll get out of this class, if you get into it, is that you'll learn 
that you can get in to companies that you thought you could never get into by coming up with novel ideas in order to create awareness, build awareness of who you are. How do we do that? Uh, in years past, we used all kinds of crazy things like um, resumes, okay? Oh, yeah, they still do. But does anybody have a creative resume? You have a resume on a website with a blog and creating something that people can't get from anywhere else? So in order to get yourself known, you have to give something that people can't get anywhere else, all right? So, uh, oh, by, oh, and I should tell you too, I have two classes. So I have 60 students, 30 in each, and today we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people, eight out of 60. So um, I always believe that the people that come to the lectures always get a better grade. They always do better because we're building a relationship. All right, so um, we're gonna talk SWOT analysis to cover with the problematic themes of globalization. What's globalization? You've taken business globalization, international business. It means marketing outside of the United States to domestic globalization. Um, I Every time I hear the word globalization, I always think of that globe that we saw in elementary school that you spun and you know, like you put your finger and go, oh yeah, I'm gonna, this is where I'm gonna go when I get older. older. Tierra del Fuego, yeah, that's it, that's it. Where's that, like at the tip of Argentina? Well, I haven't made it there yet, but I did get to Morocco last year, and uh, I was in Fez in the Sahara Desert, and had a couple of days in the Sahara Desert on camels, and, or whatever those things are, <laughs> one lump or two, and uh, Marrakesh, and uh, it was weird. It, I've never been in a third world country before, and um, it doesn't look that way, but it is. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a poor country, and I mean, some places don't even have refrigeration. What they do in order to sanitize things is they cook it, and that's that tangine. They cook it, they cook meat so long that it like turns into soup. Anyway, I will never eat that again. I am like so sick of tangine and that smell of that, whatever that cinnamon in it. Ugh. I thought it was great when I got there, but after two weeks, oh my God, just give me a McDonald's burger or an In-N-Out or something really cool with those French fries. Ugh, couscous, yuck. All right, by the end of the session, <laughs> oh yeah, this is, our instructor, he's like got some serious opinions. <laughs> By the end of the session, you'll be expected to understand how to evaluate branding strategies, defend target market choices. Target markets are basically, I know it sounds like, you know, the market, but um, a, tar a target market is the people who are going to buy your product. <clears throat> and the reason why they call it a target, if you can imagine a bullseye and all those little rings well, when you hit the center of the target, that means that you've hit the audience that you want or you know through marketing research will buy your product. <clears throat> so, um, you know, if you watch television or whatever and you watch a specific show, uh, they know you're there. And those commercials are positioned for you, including things on the internet. You're gonna assess the strengths and weaknesses of organizations, and that's where we're gonna take our SWOT analysis, and we'll do that later in the session. Uh, consumer trends, why do people do what they do? I wrote, actually, for Southern New Hampshire University in 2011, I wrote the undergrad consumer behavior class, um, and, 2012, I think. I don't know if they're still using it, but uh, why do we why do we buy things, you know? And 
you know, what are the trends? There's a good book called The Tipping Point. If you are interested in this, you guys have so much to do already. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't want to give you like tons of stuff and, oh, you should do this and you should do that and you should do this. Look, you know what? I want to make this class so darn easy that at the end of this class, when they do, when you do my review, you slap down all sevens and go, this was so great. I learned so much. The guy's an easy grader. He's fair. He's ethical. He's a good guy. Uh, I would even buy a car for him. All right. So, <laughs> so you're going to design um, business-wide continuous improvement process for regular reviewing branding. I know, I know, I know. What does all this mean? Learn how to break things down. Now, there's a thing called chunking that I came up with. And you just take a sentence and break it down into little pieces. So design business. Why? Design, okay. So you're going to design business-wide. You're going to improvement, uh, have improvement of the process for regular viewing, branding, and business activities. Okay, branding, 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 branding. Building awareness and creating a need for a product, service, or idea. You won't get that anywhere else because I wrote it. And business activities and implementing needy, needed changes. And you won't do any of that until you get into the uh, seventh and eighth week. What you're going to do is, if I've given you any comments or anything like that, uh, you'll just um, you know make a few changes along the way. And then the final paper is worth 350 points. So you can see how significant that's one third of your grade. So you want to make sure that you get that in because um, you can't pass the class without that final paper, as some people have found out. All right, so you have a book. It's a pretty good book. You know what? It was written in 2013. Uh, unless it deals with social media, influencer media, influencer marketing, you know, which is sort of the nouvelle, which is happening now, kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, marketing. There's enough good stuff in these books. I've read this book. You know, it's, it's, it's okay. It's great for finding things and using it as a resource. And it would be considered a peer-reviewed resource. So between you and me, use it on every paper you do. Okay? That would be the smart thing to do. And also, use it. It's, it's got good stuff. You could Google things, but you don't know for sure if when you Google something, whether that's what we're looking for. But if you use the book, and if you have an electronic copy, uh, then you know exactly you're in the right place and getting the right information. All right. Late assignments. Late discussion board submissions will not be accepted for credit after the deadline. This is a absolute for me. Now, I will tell you this. If you, and I know, if you are ill and you know what's happening out there and you're absolutely unable to log in and... Um, do any work in this class, the first thing you want to do is contact your advisor. Don't just sit and go three weeks later, go, oh, I was sick, I had a fever. I just had that in another class. I had a fever. I said, well, how come you didn't call me? Oh, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. Yeah. Did you call your advisor? No. Did you call the school? No. Well, what does you expect me to do? Well, I thought you'd be a nice guy. I am a nice guy. I'm not that nice. <laughs> you know, if you give away too much, people will ask you to start paying their mortgage. So <laughs> I'm not that nice. So communicate with me. Okay? You, If a paper is due on Sunday and you're not going to get it in, you need to write me and let me know. Or you're going to get the zero and then, you know, then you get a week to, 
you know, to try to get it in. But the thing of it is, is now you're already a week behind and you're already in another situation. Um, between weeks three and four, we've got like five, we've got a group um, team effort. And boy, I'd hate to be, not get your week, your first paper in and then be working on that while you're in a team effort where you have to, you know, talk to other people. Oh my God, it gets really compressed. So, you know, so like here, uh, I will accept late work without prior arrangement in the case of extenuating circumstances, such as hospitalization, okay? And you know what I'm talking about, what's going on, the current virus, childbirth, a major accident, injury or bereavement. So, um, you know, I, I had a very interesting thing happen a couple of years ago. I had a student uh, contact me two, ye two weeks after uh, the assignment and said, uh, Professor Shapps, I am so sorry. I was not able to do the last two weeks work because my boyfriend shot me nine times and I'm in hiding. <laughs> and I thought, oh, here it comes, here it comes. I said, okay, well, let me get back to you. So I called a friend of mine who's a doctor and I said, hey man, I got this weird situation. This student said to me that uh, she was shot nine times and you know, don't you think that she should be in a hospital if you're shot at least nine times? He says, no, no, not at all. He said, we only let people that have been shot 10 times in the hospital. So, uh, yeah, no excuses. I had also another student who uh, wrote me and said, I'm sorry, I'm unable to do my assignment. I was incarcerated over the weekend. I said, for what? And they said, shoplifting. And this person was in medical school. I also teach uh, students marketing and management in medical schools in the Caribbean and the United States. <sighs> my excuse would be, I'm sorry I couldn't do the assignment because my computer was confiscated by the FBI for evidence. Whoa, what would that mean? <laughs> All right. Students must uh, submit the final assignment no later than the last day of the term. No assignments are accepted after the last day of the term. And I found out recently that all assignments in this class are the deadline is the deadline in your time zone. So if you're in Los Angeles, um, you can submit your final paper until uh, 2.59 a.m. the day after in Eastern time. So that would be like 11.59 Pacific time. So if you are in a different time zone, let me know. You know, you can, when you do a, a title page, you could put the date and your time zone. I don't know, for, that would be cool. I, I actually, I recommend that highly. Just, you know, and if you can just say, well, what time zone am I if I live in outer space? Gee, I don't know. Sidereal time? I have no idea. All right. Well, let's keep going. So week one, snap, crackle, pop, rice, krispies. Okay. So if you're reading what I'm writing, you kind of go, you know, okay, I see where he's coming from. But if you'll notice that in that particular announcement, I, I tell you exactly what I'm looking for. Expand more on the ideas that your classmate has provided. If you're not a writer and like you submit like one paragraph and, you know, you're not going to get very much credit. You know, these are, you're a master's degree student. We're looking, I'm looking at like 250, 300 words for your main post and a minimum of 150 words for your, um, you know, your peer posts. Now, if I ask you a question, that counts as a peer post, and you then you only have to do one more. So, and I do ask questions and, you know, I don't know, do the best you can. That's it. I'm not going to count the words. 
but I am going to count in-text citations. So make sure in everything you do in this class, you provide in-text citations. Remember, it's a master's degree class. And that you write them in proper APA format. All right. All right. So um, discussion, strategic positioning. Let's see. That's an integral aspect of the decline in serial sales. Bites into Kellogg's results, and will Kellogg's serial cells ever return to normal? Okay, so you're going to write about this, okay? This is just one part. Read the, the assignment because it also is going to talk a little bit about your chosen company as well. So the first thing you want to do is talk about Kellogg's. One of the things you might want to do, and, you know, you talk about padding, um, you know, it's really good to say, in my opinion, or I read this, and based on something I read, I hate quotes, absolutely hate quotes. In this class, I will tell you, quotes are not needed. I know this stuff. You're writing for me. I don't need any quotes, okay? If you use a quote, you better be able to explain what the quote means and how it relates to the product and everything. I know you're going, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to fake my way through this class? <laughs> I'll show you. I'll just show you. Listen to me. I'm going to make it really easy. So, uh, you know, read this stuff and break it down into little bits like I did here. What is the background of the current market? Okay. Boy. You got a lot of information on that right now. What are the most significant sources of competition for this company? So if it's BMW, it might be Mercedes. That's why I told you to pick a big company and create your own product. Like BMW, maybe they make a, a bicycle. Or Nike can make a, a blender. The Nike blender for making blended drinks, you know, for those people who want to pump up and be counted. Okay, so the bigger the company, the better off you are. If you want, and I'm going to tell you, there's going to be 10 people that are going to say, well, I started off with this other thing in the other class, and I want to continue doing it. Go do it. Don't come back to me in the third week and go, oh, I should have listened to you. Now I got a problem. I can't find any information. I don't know how to do an, a SWOT analysis based on with, I have no facts. I have to make it up. Make it up. I, it doesn't count. Okay. So every, this is a research class. So you research stuff. In fact, it's week one. If it was me, I'd start already looking for whatever company you pick. I'd already start just lining up different resources and things like that. Okay. The final project submission deadline is week nine. Students must submit the final assignment no later than the last day of the term. 10% deduction after week nine. You know that. No assignments are accepted after the last day of the term. Boy, I said that twice. I think it might mean something. Uh, and let me just show you what a paper looks like. And here's what I'm going to do for you guys. So you remember I told you I want to make it really easy. Each time you have a paper due, I'm going to give you a template. And that is going to tell you, it, it's going to give you an APA formatted title page. It's going to give you an APA formatted table of contents. And that table of contents is going to tell you what questions I want you to answer. Don't make up your own stuff. Just follow that. And, you know, it says defining features of the product and services. Just follow that. It's the easy, it's just like a book, a textbook. Okay? I don't have any contiguous writing. If it's contiguous, I send it back. I want it broken down into little bits. Now, why? You'll learn more. You'll learn exactly. You don't have to integrate all of this stuff into a story. I break it down, you chunk it, you know, and you know exactly what you're writing. When I grade it, I can go to certain ass places and say, yeah, that works. Yeah, that works. Oh, you need an in-text citation here. Um, you know, I think your 
you, you know, you didn't get the idea or whatever. Okay, so title page, you could see the table of contents. You could see here, remember, I'm gonna make this PowerPoint available to you. You could see how the paper should look. Notice there's no white space. The columns have not been suppressed. Uh, I will send it back. Um, and uh, APA formatted. Now, the other thing that's really important is that these papers, you will have three of them, ask for eight to 10 written pages. Those eight to 10 written pages do not include a title page, a table of contents, and resources. Those are A written pages in proper APA format. If you do not write eight pages, then you will get a deduction. If you write six pages, you will probably lose about 20% of the paper. So just figure it in this terms. I usually go by 10 pages, but to eight is fine. But let's 10 points. So for every page missing, you gotta, you're gonna lose about 10 points. So if you turn in a short paper, um, the most you can get is a, is a B, and the probability is that there'll be something else that you didn't do, so you probably get a, a C, you know that you have to have a B in this class uh, in order to, you know, or a B for the MBA program. Okay, remember I'm an easy grader. All you have to do in order to get a great grade, and I'm gonna tell you this is a secret. It's a, it's a secret, don't tell anybody else in this class. All you have to do is follow my instructions and do the assignments like I want you to do, okay? And to make it even more exciting, the last two classes that I taught, which just ended on a week ago, 89% of the students in each class got an A. And you know why? Because I told them this secret. Everybody on board? If you have a keyboard, just type me a little note. Let me know you're still there. I guess nobody can hear me. Can you guys still hear me? Oh, okay. Oh, forget about the yes, sir. That's, you know, just, you don't have to call me sir. Sir. How about in the Navy? Yes, sir. No, sir. That's cool. Don't worry about it. Still here. Not sure how to get the chat out of private mode. Oh, go to your name, and there's a little box. Goes down and it says everyone. Okay. Oh, you got the secret. Oh, we've got some people that got the secret. Everybody get the secret? Does anybody know what I you got the secret? Okay, don't tell anybody because you're the only ones that know this secret. <laughs> you're gonna go like this guy is a real whack job. Okay, 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 good. Now that you all got the secret. We're gonna try something. Remember I said the secret is to be able to follow directions, right? Right, okay. So now I'm gonna test your ability to follow directions. Okay, if you have a computer, get ready because we're gonna try a test to see if you can follow directions. Let's try an online magic trick. Are you ready? Take your finger and place it on any one of the circles that you see on your screen. You want to change it? Go ahead. If you're going to change it, change it now. But now, hold your finger wherever it is and listen carefully to what I tell you. You should be on any one of the circles that you see on your screen. All right, now move your finger left or right to the nearest diamond. I'll wait a second for you. You got it there? Okay. Now I want you to move your finger up or down to the nearest circle. Okay, did you do that? Great. 
Now listen very carefully. I want you to move your finger diagonally to the nearest diamond. Okay, good. All right, and finally, move your finger left or right to the nearest circle. And I should have no idea where it arrived. Okay, so how many people have their finger on the red circle? Send me a note right away. Quick, 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 quick. Oh, these are all my A students. All right. Now, <laughs> if you want to know how to do that trick, all you have to do is download <laughs> the video or watch the video again and just use the words that I use and it'll automatically come up. But it's pretty cool, huh? So you followed, a lot of people didn't get it, you know, not in this class, but you guys are all my A students. I already got it covered. All right, let's move on. Let's, okay, so the final project um, will be, the final project consists of the milestone week three, week five, and week seven, and then you'll write an executive summary, put everything together, and turn it in in week nine. So basically, by the end of the class, you would have done all of the work necessary. Um, I know this thing says here, you know, about your, whatever you used in MBA 515. <sighs> I don't know. I, I, unless it's something like, you know, that's, that's a popular thing like Dunkin' Donuts and you're going to come up with a square donut or, uh, you know, because it's going to be really hard to find other companies to compare your product to. So I'm, I'm really stressing this. I don't care if it's Amazon, if it's Boeing, if it's Ford, you know, maybe you want, you have a new windshield wiper that works within the windshield. Um, I, don't, I don't care. I don't care what the product is. What I'm more concerned about is the company and that you can do a comparison as to what your competitor is. You're going to be working in, uh, you know, uh, competitive environments, and you'll see this later when you uh, when you do Porter's uh, competitive uh, environment stuff. When you start doing uh, the uh, SWOT analysis, when you start doing your marketing mix, and um, you know, I, oh, and by the way, there will be a couple of lectures along the way. I probably won't do them live. If I do them live, great but I'll probably post them that I've already done. Should probably watch those too. They're really gonna help you. And they're probably no more than a half hour. All right, let's keep going. So if you're going to use the product service or other business idea that you began with, uh, email me. Okay, several people have done it already. And some people had good ideas and companies that already existed. There was a lady that contacted me, I don't remember her name, if she's on the phone, please forgive me, about a leash, uh, I mean a collar for a dog, and it has a chip or something in it, so if you lose the dog, rather than have it, you know, uh, uh, injected in their body, uh, and it's, you know, you could find your dog, um, and something like that, you know, there's a lot of companies that make Pet products, Hearts Mountain, whatever you can, you, tons of them. And so you know, she has something to reference companies that make uh, you know pet products. Gosh, I said that twice already. All right, don't use a nonprofit. Don't. <laughs> okay, remember remember the secret that I told you. Remember that secret. I'm not doing this to mess you up in this class. Remember, about 90% of all of my students get A's because they know the secret. And I know that we have enough crap going on in the world right now where you don't want to work twice as hard. And since I'm giving you the grade, wouldn't it be best if you just listen to me 
and make life easy? Okay, so you never heard that. Now is the secret. Don't use a nonprofit company. Don't use a service oriented uh, oriented company like Walmart. Walmart sells products. Okay, yeah, they make some, but you don't want to use Walmart. It's huge, and they're more of a distributor. Okay, remember the marketing mix? You've got the product, the place, the price, and the promotion. Walmart is actually a place as far as the marketing mix is concerned. You'll get this later on down the road. The product, the place where it's sold, the price, how much it's sold for, and the promotion, it's like a newspaper ad or, you know, or they put the product in those end aisles. You know, uh, I'm sure some of you know, worked in stores, you know what I'm talking about. Avoid a company that falls under the top 100 Fortune 500 companies. Okay, you can go over that. Like, it's fine. I'm just trying to make it easy. The bigger the company, the easier it'll be for you to do this, you know, company thing. If you want to stick with your other project or company, by all means, do it. All right? But I can almost promise you, I have not had one student that has not run into trouble if it's something they made up because you cannot make up information in this class. You, it's a research class. So if you pick some obscure company, how are you gonna do a SWOT analysis? You're gonna to have to make everything up. So if you pick an obscure company, you could base it on Apple or whatever, and you know, one of the other companies, if it's a like as, if it's a simile. So do select a company that manufactures products. Why? Because it's easier, okay? Because you can do, when you do um, a, a, a smart objective, you could say, I'm gonna sell 5,000 products in the first year, all right? easy so now you have a service uh i'm gonna service like 600 rugs you're a rug cleaner i'm gonna service 600 rugs uh in the first year well, i guess you could do that be my guest using a company with too many sbus that's strategic business units if nobody knows what that means and you are in a master's degree program you probably should have had a lot of that in your undergrad, but um, let me give you an idea what that means. A strategic business unit, let's say it's Walt Disney Studios. So one would be their motion picture group. One would be their internet group. One would be their ride group. One would be their food services group. One would, you know, those kinds of, those are all strategic business units. If it was like PepsiCo, you know, it could be Taco Bell. I mean, you know, there's a, some of these companies have huge uh, numbers of, of business units. Pick one and only pick one product or you're going to go nuts. I had a student pick Walt Disney Studios and their paper was like 80 pages long because she had to do everything. Actually, there's a theme park, there's movies, there's records, there's this, there's that, there's videos. There's international, there's, you know. So pick one thing. I'll give you an example. If you pick McDonald's, pick a Big Mac. I used to like Big Macs. I don't eat a McDonald's anymore. I like islands, in and out And you know what I really, really like? I love Cheetos. I, you know, there's nothing like eating the biggest bag of Cheetos. And when you've eaten them, you know, and your fingers are all yellow and you lick your finger and you put it in the bottom and you get all that little Cheeto dust and you eat it. Oh man, it's like nothing on this planet. Cheetos and a Diet Coke. I could survive on that. You know, if I was lost on an island, just give me Cheetos and a Diet Coke and I'll be happy as can be. And I would sit there all day long making sandcastles. All right, by the way, this is all scripted. I've been doing this so long, I remember. 
every joke. All right, so uh, your topic and assignments, it's in your class, in your syllabus. Make sure you look at it. Submitted work must be in full APA format and include a pro uh, properly formatted APA cover page. I'll give you a lot of this stuff. So when you look at the template, it, it'll all be there. All you have to do is just fill in your stuff. Uh, I want a minimum of five references. Please make sure your references are at least, um, they're no older than five or six years max, you know, and peer reviewed. If you don't know what a peer reviewed resource is, there is a video in the announcements. Look at it. I would look at all the announcements anyway and spot check them, but you know, I'm going to tell you another secret. Okay. Are you listening? Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, I'll tell you another secret. So say you need to come up with five resources, okay? Five references. You know one's already the book, and you're probably gonna have more than five anyway, but, and you can't find another two. Like, by the way, if you have a big company, their website would be considered a peer-reviewed website. Now you're starting to pick up how easy this gets. Let's say you can't come up with enough and you just like maybe two, you have to just, you know, refer to the internet. I'll let it go, but that's a secret. Don't tell anybody, okay? But for you guys, I'll let it go, okay? Are we good with that? Cool. Uh, you don't want to read that. <laughs> this is the template like I'm going to give you. And uh, wow, what happened there? Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, in-text citations. This is like what I'm looking for. And this lady that you're going to hear, um, I have probably heard this video about, I don't know, maybe 50 times. And I am... I don't know who she is, but I'm falling in love with her. So don't tell anybody. This is a brief tutorial that covers the basics about in-text citations, including why they're used, how they're used, and when they're used. But first, it's important to know why we use in-text citations. It's simple. In-text citations give the reader, your audience, a trail to follow to find where you found the information you're borrowing. So let's go ahead and follow the trail. This is a paraphrase from a paper I'm working on, and this is the in-text citation for it. If the readers wanted more information from the source I just used in my paper, the information in the in-text citation gives them enough information to get them to the source listed in the Works Cited page. It includes the author's last name, the page number, with a period after the parentheses. This citation takes us to the source's information on the Works Cited page, and here it is. Now we know exactly where to find the source, and because the in-text citation also gives us the page number, we know precisely where that information was found. So let's look at the path of our trail again. The in-text citation leads us to the Works Cited page. The Works Cited page then leads us to the exact location of the source. Pretty simple, right? Yeah. But what if my source doesn't have an author? Easy, you just give the information that allows the reader to follow the trail to the Works Cited page. Like here, here's an article that doesn't have an author, and this is what it looks like. You'll notice I've shortened the title down from ownership of green homes expected to increase rapidly. I've shortened it enough where it still makes sense and will get the reader to the Works Cited page, but now it doesn't take up too much room. So what if there isn't a page number, like on a website? Again, you just give the information that allows the reader to follow the trail to the Works Cited page. Like here on my Works Cited, there's a website that doesn't list any page numbers. So this is what it looks like with no page numbers. It's just the name of the author or the website, whichever is used to list it alphabetically on the Works Cited page. And what if I use a signal phrase with the author's name to introduce the text I'm borrowing. Easy, you just provide the rest of the information needed in the parenthetical citation. Like here, according to Daniel McGinn is my signal phrase, and since I've already provided the author's name, I don't need to include it in the citation. 
like here. I've only included the page number. And here's a free tip about signal phrases. The first time you refer to an author, use his or her first and last name. Anytime after that, just use the last name. So how do in-text citations work when I'm using a direct quotation? Well, all the same rules apply, but you'll also want to add quotation marks. For example, you'll notice that the quotation marks are used to enclose the borrowed words, and the period goes after the parentheses. So how do you know when you need to use in-text citations? Use in-text citations when you summarize, paraphrase, or directly quote someone else. Basically, anytime you borrow someone else's words or ideas, you need to cite it. So we've covered where, how, when, and why to use in-text citations. Good luck on your projects. Good luck. All right, and you'll see this in the PowerPoint. You can download it again. You'll see exactly what I'm looking for, what your paper should look like. Just follow this. Follow the yellow brick room. Okay. Uh, milestone one. That's not going to happen before uh, week three, and we'll come back with something. I don't want to go through all this stuff. It establishes your organization. Uh, we could be here all night going over this. So let's talk about peer review and what it means. I, guess, I think that's like far more important. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can get it to work. This tutorial explains what peer review means. During the essay crunch, where you get piles of assignments, you might get an essay assignment that asks for peer reviewed articles only for your sources. You may wonder, what's the difference, and why are these articles important? Peer-reviewed articles are generally articles that have been reviewed in detail by scholars in the same field. But how does a peer review article get published in a scholarly journal? Well, your professors do more than just teach. They also play the role of a researcher and often must produce new research. Their research can vary depending on their field, from physics to the study of the human body. I just had to stop. Um, she said that your professors do more than just teach. Um, she's right. I play the guitar when I'm not teaching. Uh, I play the blues. Or the economy to philosophical ponderings of Socrates and can be published in a book or journal. Some of this research requires funding. Once the professor or professors, some do work together, have findings and interpret the results, they can produce a paper for submission. Scholarly research can take several years and is a long process. Once the paper is written, the researchers or your professors will send it to a journal that undergoes the peer review process. Please keep in mind, not every journal has a peer review process. The editor reviews the submission and ensures that it fits the journal's scope or topic area. If it does, the editor sends out copies to other scholars in the field. These scholars are experts in the subject and have already published their own work. These scholars are also the peer reviewers. It is important to note that you may hear the term referee, which is another way of saying peer reviewer. When the scholars are reviewing the article, the major questions that they ask are, is the research new and interesting to scholars in the field? Are there mistakes in the results or writing? Does the research and results make sense? The reviewers send their notes back to the editor and the editor decides that the paper should be published in the journal. If it is accepted, the editor will send back an article with corrections and notes that the researcher must make changes to. Most articles are rejected by prominent journals, so the process of review is quite tough. Once the article is published in a journal, a library that pays for a subscription to the journal may receive the most recent publication. If you need more help in understanding peer review or research... Okay, we don't need any more help, but what I'm saying is your, book, your textbook is one. You can... Um, there is a, an announcement that kind of tells you where to get them. And I'm also telling you that not every uh, resource that you use is going to be peer reviewed. Okay, the book, the website, uh, somebody else's website. So if you go to, say your product's like a Coca-Cola and you're designing a new drink, uh, Pepsi, Pepsi, Pepsi would be also considered um, you know, a peer reviewed because they're not going to, they're not going to publish information that is false. Uh, and you know, you, you also can use 
um, the the uh, census. Uh, if you need to know target audiences, age groups, things like that. Don't drive yourself crazy. Because the first thing you're going to do is, oh, I can't find peer review. I just told you there's like a couple and the other ones you can't find. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Just... It's okay. <laughs> Final project rubric, you wanna take a look at that. Uh, it's gonna be basically everything that you've done up to that time. Uh, in week two, you're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about jazzercise. We don't need to do anything like that. Okay, now, this thing is basically over. Does anybody have anything they wanna ask me? Um, and, uh, you know, uh, if so, I'm gonna unmute this and you can ask a question. Anybody, anybody have any questions? One at a time. Anybody wanna comment on my presentation? Anybody wanna buy some Cheetos and Diet Coke for me? It'll arrive in 12 days via UPS. No? Oh, okay. We have one. We have we have a taker. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> on, on, the, uh, on the article in the video on Kellogg, yeah. do you say their current situation? Do you mean from back in 2015 or 2020? Okay. That's a great question. And I'm going to show you how what a great professor I am. What would you like it to be? Um, 2015. Cool. That's good for me. <laughs> okay. That was easy. All right. Do you want to buy some Cheetos and Diet Coke? No. <laughs> oh, okay. We have, we'll have that delivered to you, you know, in 12 days. Okay. <laughs> Make sure you spray it with Lysol. <laughs> oh, gosh. Is there anybody, I shouldn't say this, is there anybody sick out there in... And, and, and if you are, let me know and I'll work with you to, you know, I have to give you some extensions and things like that. Really, I'm serious. I, I will definitely work with you. Um, uh, you know, yeah, this is uh, a really, really tough time. All right. I, I'm trying to be funny because we should not make this serious. Okay. Every, there's too much serious going on. So, you know, I'm just I'm like... Larry David, that Larry David show. I love that show. Anybody else have anything to say? Anybody just want to ask me a question about some of the films I worked on? Anybody want to? Uh, 